God encourages us to cooperate together and team up rather than fight each other. Mm. Right. And the chapters in the book are all about how we approach life differently. So we communicate differently. We relieve stress differently. We tend to problem solve differently. We approach parenting a little bit differently. We romance differently. And so when you learn to serve one another, which the, the modern way of saying that is we take turns meeting each other's needs. But when you, when you serve one another, everybody's needs get met and the entire family operates better. Right. And so the, um, the premise in the book is really based on all the one another's in mm. the Bible. Serve one another, accept one another, love one another, forgive one another. There's a lot of good advice God has for marriage. And Bob, I've met a lot of men who they didn't realize at the time but when they got married they thought they were marrying a, a buddy that looked way better than all his guy friends and then he got Real. married and realized i married a woman and she operates differently and so as you appreciate those differences and you talk about the one another's and that's not something that i mean it does take time to learn to to love one another and to love one another in the Lord and to build a strong marriage, not an overnight thing. And so tell me what you see as perhaps the way to get there. You know, we, we know God, if, you know, if God has called a married couple together and we see the purpose for marriage, the ordination of marriage in Genesis chapter two, but there is a process. So tell me just a bit about how people can actually apply God's Word to really build a strong marriage where these differences become something that enhance the marriage rather than tear it down. Right, right. I think that's where we start with uh, the Bible tells us to accept one another. And that will bring the praise of God into your uh, home. And so to do that, you kind of have to understand how God created uh, the male and female brain uh, so you could value and appreciate it. So if you look at the way God wired men. Like the way, the way a typical man processes information in life looks like the top of a waffle. It's a bunch of boxes. All those boxes are separated from another by walls. And the way we as men operate is the first issue in life goes in the first box. Second issue goes in the second box. Third issue goes in the third box and so on. And we as men, we spend time in one box at a time in one box only. And Mm. because of that single focus that we naturally have, we're problem solvers by nature. We like to go into a box, figure out what the problem is, assign a solution, and then move on. And if we get to a box and we we see the problem, but we don't know what the solution is, we will just move on. And for part of life, this is really valuable. Like there are some things in the family life that need that single focus that men bring. The workplace needs that single focus. The church, the community all need that single focus. But it does create some tension in our important relationships because our wives do not process the same way we do. Mm. No, like the way God wired uh, a woman's brain, there's actually more connections in between the two hemispheres. And so if you look at the way a woman's mind works, it looks like um, a one noodle uh, laying on top <laughs> of a plate of noodles. And if you follow that one noodle around, it looks like it touches pretty much every other noodle on the plate. And that's the way we women process life is we travel through life making emotional connections to the people and things that matter most to us. So by nature, we're really awesome at um, multiple multitasking or sometimes called toggle tasking, jumping from thing to thing mm-hmm, to thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can be listening to your wonderful show. We're talking to a friend on the on, a, on the phone. We're like, oh, you need to listen to Bob. He has some great <laughs> guests. At the same time, we're writing down our Christmas care, uh, list and our grocery list for our six kids. We're telling the kids in sign language to quit fighting, get to see them on the phone. We've got a load in the washer, a load in the dryer. We're cooking dinner, we're, uh, and we open and shut the oven door with our foot. We're like amazing multitaskers. What's Bill doing during that time? <laughs> And when, well, when Romans 15, 7 says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you, it doesn't mean that you put up with the things you don't like. Like a lot of men, when, when their wives are multitasking and they're talking about this subject and then that subject and then this one, like men kind of glaze over and they're like, what is going on here? And, and we will try to change our wives so they make more sense to us. And when you do that, you're actually fighting against God's design because there are some things in, in life that work better through multitasking. Hmm. Like everything in our family that needed Pam to multitask. The schedules, <laughs> the many, many schedules. Yeah, because I, I would have shut our, our schedules down. I would have limited everybody. And Pam had the ability to make opportunity for everybody. So learning to value the differences that your spouse brings is what acceptance is all about. 